So in this video, what I want to talk about a little bit is intellectual disability or intellectual developmental disorder, if you like. So one thing to know about this is that this term is a more recent term. It was previously known as MR or mental retardation. And what we have now is a federal statute that allowed for the replacement of that term with intellectual disability. But it makes sense because people who suffer from this disorder have a lot of, um, you know, it's very hurtful to hear someone call you retarded and even in popular culture people say oh that's retarded and it's it, it can be really hurtful to these people and I don't think it's a good thing so I'm glad that they kind of changed that terminology here now the diagnosis is based off of sub-average general intellectual and adaptive functioning and deficits in three particular domains and those domains include conceptual social and practical domains the definition, those terms, um, exactly what's meant by those terms, exactly what constitutes deficits is, is a little difficult to understand because prior to this, a lot of the intellectual disability diagnosis was based off of IQ or the use of the intelligence quotient to kind of classify what the severity and such. And that is still really useful and I'm going to crack into that right now in the next slide. So severity is no longer based solely on the intelligence quotient. So even though it's not based solely on the intelligence quotient, it doesn't mean necessarily that it's not useful to have an IQ um, test performed on the on these on these patients or on these people, because it does still it does still hold value. And I will tell you with great certainty that on board exams, they generally don't catch up to all these things right away, and it kind of eliminates board questions that were could be used in the past. So in the past, you could easily ask a board question like say you know, patients, blah, 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 you know, having deficits in conceptual function, social function, etc., social domains, etc., has an IQ of 70, what is, you know, what is the degree of severity of intellectual disability, something along those lines, and it would be very easy to just, you needed to know those IQ ranges in order to answer that question, so some of those questions do still pop up, at least in the material I've reviewed. But again, it's based on this overall, the new definition bases it on, or diagnosis is now based on deficits across conceptual, social, and practical domains. But we still classify mild, moderate, severe, and profound. So starting with mild, previously we looked for an IQ range of somewhere between 50 and 55, it depends on which textbook you read, all the way up to 70. And children with mild intellectual disability, they develop social and communication skills, so they actually do develop fairly reasonable social communication skills, and they can function pretty normally, actually, as an adult. They don't have a lot of uh, noticeable deficits, per se, and these individuals tend to be relatively immature in social interactions compared to peers and require support for complex tasks of daily living. So the complex tasks of daily living that these people mostly need um, support with would be financial decisions, so they're not very good at managing their money, they're not very good at managing their finances, or anything like that, and they'll likely need some help along the way. The other one is healthcare decision making. So these patients will not be very good at making healthcare decisions for themselves, especially complicated ones that may, you know, be life and death type of decisions. They may want to have some help there as well. And the other one would be legal decisions. They're not very good at making legal decisions, so they would need some additional counseling from someone who has some experience with making legal decisions. Um, but I would still remember with mild, the IQ range is somewhere between 50 and 70. And I would also, you know, take into account that these, these people are pretty well functioning. You probably wouldn't notice much until you started talking to them for a little bit. Like on a superficial level, you might see them, you might talk with them and feel like, oh, nothing's really wrong. I don't really see too much here. But as you dive a little deeper and you have the conversation a little bit longer, you start to notice certain features, again, like the social immaturity. Um, they tend to be like immature in those social interactions. So that over time, interacting with them, you'll probably notice some of these deficits. Moderate, so moderate intellectual disability was previously defined as the IQ range between 35 and 40 to somewhere between 50 and 55. So I probably re remember 35 to 55 or 40 to 50, somewhere around that range, and that will help you with exam questions. And these people, as you might expect, if they're moderate, will have more limited social awareness. They can be trained to perform most activities of personal care, so meaning they can wash themselves, feed themselves, clothe themselves. Um, but they'll have to work in more of like a sheltered job environment, which means they'll always have like sort of supervision while they're performing whatever job they're, they're doing. Um, they'll require probably moderate daily supervision, 
is usually required and they may even function best in a group home setting. So the group home setting allows for a situation where they can have constant monitoring um, throughout the day and then if they need help with any of these tasks they'll have it right there in the group home setting. The next one is severe. So severe intellectual disability previously defined as IQ range of 20 to 25 to 30 to 35 to 40. And these children actually have trouble with slow and poor motor development and they have limited speech and they generally require much more supervision. So you can see how this is basically a spectrum. It goes from you know, the very mild cases where they function pretty normally to the more severe cases. And then eventually to profound where this was previously defined as an IQ level below 20 to 25. So these children have poor cognitive and social capabilities and their, and their speech is often absent and they require constant supervision and special care settings. So they're going to be the, you know, the worst off in terms of a function. They're not going to function very well at all. They're going to need constant supervision. They're going to need to be in a, in a special care setting, you know, such as like an assisted living type of thing or, or um, almost like nursing home type setting where they're, where they're constantly under supervision. The onset of intellectual disability must occur before the age of 18. So you want to have that diagnosis made before the age of 18. And the prevalence is somewhere around 2 to 3% of school aged populations. So the things that I would take from this are, you know, first of all, that we've changed the name. This is no longer a mental retardation. We now call it intellectual disability. And that the definitions or the use of IQ is no longer the strict criteria for, you know, defining what area a person falls into. Now we still use it and it is still useful. However, it's not the sole it's not the sole um, factor in making a diagnosis. So anyway, that's it.